Are you considering adding diatomaceous earth to your routine on your backyard homestead, maybe your birds, your rabbits, or even to control garden pests? I'm going to talk about in this video why you may not want to do that, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're talking about diatomaceous earth. It's one of the most common things you hear about if you're looking at any kind of homesteading blog, um, any kind of podcast related to homesteading, keeping a backyard chickens, any of that kind of stuff. So what is diatomaceous earth? I'm assuming if you're watching this video you already know, but just in case, uh, just a brief description of it, it's basically fossilized remains of diatoms, I think is what they're called, millions of years old probably, or thousands of years old, depending on you know how old you believe the earth is. Either way, it's fossilized, tiny fossilized, looks like dust basically. And uh, reportedly, here's how it works, here's what it does. If you use it for insect control, um, you spread this out, the insects crawl across it, and it's sharp, so it cuts their exoskeleton and dehydrates them. That's the theory anyway. There's not really a whole lot of studies been done on exactly how it works. Uh, we do know that it is effective in controlling some insects, quite a few insects anyway. Um, among those are going to be lice, uh, mites, um, anything that pretty much crawls on the ground, it's effective in controlling that. Um, there's also some studies that suggest it may be helpful in controlling internal parasites within animals. But they're very limited studies and they've had very mixed results. They've seen some positive, some negative, some no change at all. So why am I saying you may not want to use this on your homestead? Well, let me just first of all say, if you want to use diatomaceous earth on your homestead, you go right ahead. In your backyard, flocks, whatever. Make sure it's food grade diatomaceous earth. There is a difference. So make sure you get food grade diatomaceous earth. Um, there are plenty of people out there that will swear by it, swear how well it works in keeping down mites, lice. They'll tell you that they've been using it for years and have never had a problem with mites or lice on any of their birds or any of their rabbits or anything like that. My deal is I've never used it and I've never had a problem on any of my birds or any of my rabbits or anything else with mice or, or excuse me, mites or lice or any of those other kinds of things. There, and there are some concerns that it could be doing damage to your animals as well. Uh, the silicone that's in those, or silico, silica, there we go, silica, not silicone, sorry, that's a different topic altogether. The silica that's in, included in diatomaceous earth is a known carcinogen. It can cause lung disease. Um, I can't remember the name of the lung disease right off. It's sila, silicosa or something like that. It's the same disease basically like auto workers get. Um, if they don't wear dust masks, any of those kinds of things, it can cause that problem. Now, chances are your birds are not going to live long enough to get that anyway, so it's not really a major concern for your birds. Same thing with your rabbits, your, any of your other animals, they're probably not going to live long enough to cause that problem, but it can cause problems in their lungs when the dust is inhaled, and it's very, very dusty. Um, the bigger concern really though is if you have anybody in your household that has uh, any kind of respiratory issues, asthma, any of those kinds of things, it can very significantly impact those people. So it's a good idea to keep it away from them, to make sure that you don't dust it up if you are going to use it, to make sure you wear a dust mask when you apply it to things. Here's my problem with diatomaceous earth though, is that everybody preaches this as a common everyday use, use it all the time to prevent everything. And, and I don't personally subscribe to the preventing things and for the most part. I've never had a problem with lice or mites. I see no reason to add it to prevent them from occurring. Instead, what I prefer to do is to wait. If I start seeing a problem with that, then I might use it to correct the problem. And that's what I really feel like diatomaceous earth comes in. So if you do get an infestation of you know, lice, or mites or anything along that lines, then by all means, you can use some diatomaceous earth to get that under control. I mean, again, make sure it's food grade diatomaceous earth, but don't use it any longer than you need to because there are some concerns that it can cause some pretty significant lung issues, respiratory issues, and especially in birds that are already known to, you know, already susceptible to respiratory issues to begin with. Generally, birds are more susceptible than other animals. So it's a good idea, again, Use it sparingly, use it when you need it to control something. Another thing that I don't like about diatomaceous earth is that it is, 
it's not a, not a pesticide, but in a sense, it's a broad spectrum killer. It will kill just about anything that crawls. Some of the bugs that crawl around in your garden, in your rabbit hutches, in your quail hutches, in your chicken coops, are beneficial insects. And you don't want to kill those bugs because there's what, those are what keeps everything else in check. So if you're killing all your um, roly polies, for example, roly polies don't eat your vegetables. Um, if you're gardening, they don't eat your vegetables. What they do is they help decay, they help break down dead matter. So they, they turn it into compost, basically. You don't want to kill them. You don't want to kill your earthworms that are crawling through that stuff. Those are, those are what helps your garden grow. You don't want to kill the predator bugs that help keep everything else in check, or you'll just constantly be reliant on some kind of pesticide or, or something else in order to keep that stuff in check. And it can get out of control very, very quickly. So there are a couple of negative things about diatomaceous earth and why I feel it should not be used just whenever, wherever, all the time, part of a daily routine. Again, no problems if you have a flea infestation, a lice infestation, a mite infestation. If any of those things get out of hand, then definitely you can use that to get them back in check. But once they're back in check, I would stop using it at that point and, uh, and don't use it again unless you have another problem. That's my opinion on it. Very little scientific evidence has been done on the use of diatomaceous earth, how effective it is. That, that scientific studies that have been done have had somewhat mixed results. So it's not, uh, it's not as um, foolproof as people would make you believe. That's my opinion on it. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Let me know in the comments below what your opinion is on diatomaceous earth. And if you found a study that's rock hard, you know, ironclad and shows some great benefits of using it on a daily basis, let me know. I'd be happy to read that. Thank you so much for watching. As always, God bless.